And as we breathe, we soften our bellies, soften our bodies. And let go. Let go and let God be God in us at this time. Let go of anything that you may have brought with you this morning, anything that's not serving your highest and best. Any fear or worry, regret, resentment, judgment, disappointment. Let go of anything and everything that you've been holding on to that's keeping you from knowing the truth of who you are. A perfect child of God, here to express God. To live as God in the world through your expression of love and kindness and compassion, through your expressions of courage and strength and beauty. So today, we let go of even our concepts of, of what is right and good for us. We let go of our own thoughts, our own mind, in our relationship with the divine. And we affirm that God is longing to express with, through us in even a greater way than what we can imagine. It doesn't mean that we stop praying and seeking and knocking, but it means that we take this time to let go of all of that and allow God to be God in us. Because we know that our prayers are answered and sometimes our prayers are answered in even a greater way than we could have imagined. So we create that space this morning, that openness for that something greater. We're willing to even let go of the good for the better. We let go of our attachments to outcomes and trust the great mystery to show up in a way beyond our wildest imagination. And to do this, we surrender, we let go, we open our hearts and allow the divine flow to move in and through and express as us. So we know that it is not I, but the Christ within that does the work. The Christ being the greatest expression of love and peace and joy and abundance that's longing to express as us. And so we breathe a little deeper, open our minds and our hearts beyond our knowing, beyond our belief, and maybe even beyond our faith. God is longing to express in and through and as you. So I detach with love to all the things I desire. And I allow the mystery of God's love to bless me. Relaxing a little bit more, allowing the shoulders to fall away from the ears belly to soften, the face to relax. We move deeper into the silence, the secret place of the Most High, listening for the still small voice ever guiding us. So it is with trust that we detach, let go, and surrender. I detach with love and allow God to bless me. I detach with love and allow God to bless me. 
in the silence. And breathing deeper once again, gently begin to bring our awareness back to this time and place. Having touched the stillness, even for this brief moment, we are energized and free to allow God to be God in us. And we go forward through our service and through our day and through our lives, trusting that divine presence. Trusting the good of God's plan to manifest in our lives and in the world. And we do this as we give thanks and pray this in the name and in the nature of the indwelling Christ presence. And so it is. Amen. You are the horse running wild You're the parent and the child You are the bird in the tree Who is serenading me You dolphin and the fish you are the well in the ocean you are healing all emotions you are the wind beneath my wings the love that makes me see you everything one you are the prayer you are the poem you are the place that we call home you are the trial and tribulation you're the pain and the medication you are every book on every shelf you are life itself you are one day
Thank you. Thank you for bringing yourself and your energy here this morning. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's been an interesting morning for me. It's been a little warm. My linen shirt was wrinkly and sweaty before I left the house, so I had to change my shirt like two times before I left the house. I wanted to wear shorts, knowing that our AC is not working right, but ended up putting on this outfit so I could be comfortable. And, uh, you know, just, just a lot of, lot of things going on, you know, that I have to navigate. And sometimes I have an attachment to the way that I think should things should be. <laughs> and then something happens, life happens, and it turns out to be something else. But the something else can also be a blessing. And that's what this message is about this morning, about detachment, about detaching from our habitual and perpetual ways of doing life and letting go to something greater. You know, we kind of add that addendum to our prayers and unity, which is like this or something better, right? We pray for a specific thing, and then we let go and open up to something even better. And how many times has that happened for you in your life, you know, where you thought you're going to have this outcome, and then something else happened that you weren't planning, and it was even better. But in, you know, beforehand, when you're praying for that one thing, it's, it can be difficult not knowing what it is. But we have to surrender to the not knowing, surrender to the mystery, the great mystery of, of, of the good that is at hand for us. So, you know, in our culture, we're, we're so driven, we're so driven to plan what it is, how our lives are going to unfold. And, and it works a lot of times. People are very happy about the way their lives have, have uh, become. I, I have a friend who's a financial uh, guy. He's had his own company for 25 or 30 years. And he has set himself up so well in his work financially. He told me, he said, it would take an asteroid to me mess up my plan. <laughs> and we're not praying. I'm hoping that asteroid doesn't happen. But, uh, you know, he, he just has made a really good plan and he's really happy with his life and, you know, he's living from that place. And, uh, and that's probably true for a lot of people, but it's also not true for a lot of people. A lot of us are, don't know, it wouldn't take an asteroid, it would just take a hurricane, you know, <laughs> to upset our lives and to change things in a way that would be a, str a struggle. So our work uh, in Deepak Chopra in, in his book, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, talks about this idea of detachment. And he says, as I let go of the need to arrange my life, the universe brings abundant good to me. As I let go of my need to arrange my life, the universe brings abundant good to me. And that's part of our spiritual work, right? letting go and trusting the divine so you know 
it's kind of a combination, right? We do our work, we do what we can, and then we turn it over and trust that something greater is going to happen. So there's a couple stories about detachment that I want to share with you from this perspective of um, kind of trying to make things happen and uh, also accepting the things that change in our lives that aren't the way that we thought they should be. And one is about a wandering monk who moved about uh, preaching. He owned only the clothing on his back and, strangely, a golden begging bowl gifted to him by a benefactor who was also his disciple. One night, as he was about to lie down among the ruins of an ancient monastery, he spied a thief lurking among the columns. Here, take this, he said, handing the golden begging bowl to the thief. That way, you won't disturb me once I have fallen asleep. The thief eagerly took the bowl and ran off. But the next morning he returned, saying, You have made me feel poor, giving me the bowl so freely. Teach me to acquire the riches that make this sort of lighthearted detachment possible. That monk was willing to give up that bowl that he had to not be disturbed. And yet, it was his most prized possession. It's a great example of detachment, right? Of trusting the universe, of trusting the divine to give us what we need. And not only did he get back what was rightfully his, he gained another student, right? And he changed that person's life through his example of detachment, that willingness to let go. Second story is, among the wandering shepherds was a leader who lived in riches and luxurious tents surrounded by servants. So lavish was his health that, or his wealth, that his tent pegs driven into the ground were made of solid gold. A poorer shepherd came by one day with his wooden begging bowl cracked and warped. Seeing such wealth, he begged from the wealthy man, but also unbraided him from such conspicuous wealth. Nevertheless, the wealthy man welcomed him, served him a fine meal, and permitted him to rest in his expensive tents. Early the next day, the wealthy man said to the poor one, come, let us go up to Jerusalem. Staff in hand, the wealthy man left his wealth and luxury behind without a thought or care. A short way into the journey, the poor man realized that he had left his wooden begging bowl behind and wanted to go back and get it. But the rich man said, I left my wealth behind without care or worry, yet you are so attached to a cup of little or no worth that you cannot go up to Jerusalem without it. You unbraided me from my wealth, but I want to assure you the golden tent pegs to which you objected were driven into the earth, not into my heart. So I love that perspective too, the poor man just holding on so tightly to the little that he had that left no room for God's good to come into his life and bless him in a greater way. And the richer man or the wealthier man was so willing to let go of what he had to experience more of God. It's kind of like the rich young man, right? That. Uh, Asked Jesus how you get into the kingdom of heaven. He said, sell all your things and come follow me. He wasn't able to do it, right? And so this is what this detachment is all about, about freeing ourselves of what we think we want for something greater. And I don't know what that greater is. I, most of the time, I don't know what it is for me, let alone for you. But I think it has something to do with our faith and our trust in God and knowing that God is good and that what God wants for us is good. And um, so it's, it's, a, it's a walk of faith, really, to trust 
Trust the divine, that the divine's gonna show up in a way greater than I can even imagine. You know, in some of the visioning work I've done over the years, they say that your vision be, should be so great that it can only manifest with God's help. So it's gotta be bigger than anything that I can imagine. So here we are in these peculiar times, uh, getting ready to release this property and move to something less, the, the, what's the word, the, the, the jury, uh, luxurious, what's the word? Luxurious, it's luxurious. thank you. And uh, so we're gonna be letting go of a lot of stuff to let go of a lot of history and, and uh, of this property. But remember, this is just a material thing. Yes, it's got a lot of history in it, a lot of beauty, but there's something better. And we're gonna make a, transform a transition and a transformation into something else. And I, I've heard through so many people, how many people are grieving the loss of this property, the loss of this stuff and all the history that comes with it. But we have to open up to something greater. If, if you, we stay stuck in that mindset, we don't open up a space for something better. So I know it's gonna be different and it's gonna be maybe difficult for us, but there's a plan from uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. I, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. And so the more gossip there is, the more talk there is about leaving this space and why we're leaving this space and all that, none of that has anything to do, but what it will do is hold you back from your own process of accepting God's good. So we have to let go of that. We gotta, if I were you, when you hear people start telling those stories to honor them and their grief, but let it go because we have to step into that greater expression that God has for us. Where was this ministry before we got here, right? Where was it before it was there? I hear there was a time when it just met in you know, someone's house or whatever, it was a small gathering of people. And then it flourished and it became what it was. And then through circumstances, it became what it is now. And right now, right here, I mean, look around. It's not about the numbers. It's about who we are as people of unity that want to experience God in a greater way. So we have to detach, we have to detach from our own wants, from our own stories, and open up for something greater. Uh, so I'll show you how this showed up in another way for me. So when I was a kid, a friend of mine went away, I was about 15 years old, and he gave me his motorcycle to use for like a month. And I was so excited, nothing like a teenage boy with a motorcycle. And uh, so we would go, I'd go on these rides with my friend, Buddy, and we'd go ride through these trails and came out onto this road this one time. And I just took off down this road, this back country road. I was going as fast as I could down this road, probably like 55 miles an hour on this little motorcycle. And uh, all of a sudden the road in front of me disappeared. I mean, just disappeared. It didn't go left, it didn't go right, it just disappeared. And all of a sudden, I'm airborne, going 55 miles an hour through the air, and I'm not evil Knievel. I don't know how to do this. And I just let go. And I landed like I was evil Knievel and rode perfectly to a stop. And put the kickstand down, got off the motorcycle, took my helmet off and sat on the ground and waited for my friend Buddy to come up to the top of the hill. And he did, and he is just shaking his head. He said, I expected to see you over there and over there and over there. And there was something that happened in that moment where I was powerless, where I didn't have a choice. There was nothing I could do. And I just surrendered and I detached. And God carried me. And that's what it feels like sometimes in this process with all the things that come by me and all the things that we're doing to make this move. But sometimes it feels like there's just no solution and I don't know what to do and everybody's got a different story and 
you know, and everybody's hurting in one way or another or, or needs some kind of answer. I don't have the answers, but God does. There is a plan, and it's true for each one of our lives. If you're sitting here this morning and you're wondering what's next for you and uh, how it's going to work out, if we remember the truth that God is good and we align ourselves with that good and let go of our fear and our worry, the good will show up. You know, in Buddhism, there's two things that cause us suffering, attachment and aversion. So when we are attached to stuff and it's the threat of it being taken away or us not getting it, we suffer. When we try to avoid what is in front of us, we suffer because we're trying to push everything away. So the work is to be here now to trust that it's all good, that it's all working out for our lives in a way that is going to bless us. So I have a guiding scripture. Uh, I was forgetting the reference. It's Psalm, I think it might be Psalm 118. But it says that I shall be satisfied when I awaken in thy image. And this is the one thing that I'm attached to. Because I believe that's why we're here. We are here to express God. We are here to be the love, the joy, the harmony, the peace, the compassion of God. And so I may not be satisfied until I feel like I am there, that I am awake enough to understand who I am, to understand others in a way that I can be loving and compassionate all the time. And so that's, that's the one thing I'm attached to, is allowing God to express in and through and as me. And sometimes even with that, I have to let go and let God do that. Because it is the truth of who I am. It's the truth of who you are. There is a spark of the divine within you. And it is longing to express as you. So we just continue to do our work and, um, and evolve, right? And really trust that God's good is here for us. Another way that it's stated through scripture is the stone that the builder rejected became the cornerstone of the building. And I love that story because you imagine these guys building the building, building the temple, whatever, and they throw the stone away because it's ugly or it's out of shape or something. They don't like something about it. And then that stone finds the most special place in the building, the cornerstone. And that's how it is in our lives sometimes that we, we hold on to something or, we, or we, we, we get rid of something that we don't think is serving us and then it ends up to be the foundation of our lives. People in recovery know about that. Our past is our greatest asset, that being a person in recovery helps you to be compassionate and understanding about other people who suffer like that. And there's other situations in your life, you know, I don't know everybody's story. So, you know, you have, a, you have situations like that where something that in the past looked like a detriment became a blessing. And that's the truth about God, that everything in our lives, that everything is a blessing if we can get deep down into it enough to find the God spark, to find the God seed within us. So here are Deepak Chopra's steps on how to practice detachment. Today, I will commit myself to detachment. I will allow myself and those around me the freedom to be who they are. I will not rigidly impose my idea of how things should be. I will not force solutions on problems, thereby creating new problems. I will participate in everything with detached involvement. Can you do that? Okay, we'll try number two. Today, I will factor in uncertainty as an essential ingredient of my experience. 
trusting the unknown, uncertainty. In my willingness to accept uncertainty, solutions will spontaneously merge out of the problem, out of the confusion, disorder, and chaos. The more uncertain things seem to be, the more secure I will feel because uncertainty is my path to freedom. Through the wisdom of uncertainty, I will find my security. Are you willing to trust the unknown, the mystery, the uncertainty of life that will guide you to your certainty? Number three, I will step into the field of all possibilities and anticipate the excitement that can occur when I remain open to an infant, to an infinity of choices. When I step into the field of all possibilities, I will experience all the fun, adventure, magic, and mystery of life. You're willing to step into the field of possibilities and anticipate the excitement of what is possible. So those are mindsets that help us detach from whatever it is that we're holding on to. So when we look around the world, there's a lot of stuff going on out there. There's a lot of stuff going on in our personal lives from COVID to uh, politics, to uh, financial challenges, to $5 gallon gas, to um, wars, all these things that have always been going on. Right now they seem a little accentuated, don't they? And so they affect us, but I wanna share this and close with this uh, reading from Mark Morford. Stop thinking this is all there is. Realize that for every ongoing war and religious outrage and environmental devastation and bogus attack plans, there are a thousand counterbalancing acts of staggering generosity and humanity and art and beauty happening all over the world right now on a breathtaking scale, from flower box to cathedral. Resist the temptation to drown in fatalism, to shake your head and sigh and just throw it in the karmic towel. Realize that this is the perfect moment to change the energy of the world, to step right up and crank your personal volume right when it all seems dark and bitter and offensive and acrimonious and conflicted. There's your opening. Remember magic. And finally, believe you are part of a groundswell of resistance, a seemingly small but actual very, very large impending karmic overhaul, a great shift, the beginning of something important and potent and unstoppable. We are who we've been waiting for, right? So we move from fatalism. We move from, oh, this is it, to this is it. Something greater, something greater is in store for each and every one of us because that's God's plan. That's the plan for good in our lives. So let's take a moment and know this inwardly. But as we come into prayer, we breathe deeply. And in that breath is all the energy, all the life force, all the creativity, all the love that we need to turn our world around, to turn our lives around, to step into back into the grace of God, the sufficiency of our lives, to know that all is working for good. This or something better. We give thanks and pray this in the name and in the nature of the indwelling Christ presence. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Bodhi. Great message and so timely. Uh, we're going to start off the uh, abundance portion of the ceremony by taking a look at our monthly prosperity goal and where we stand in the month. Our monthly goal is $21,500. And so far in the month of July, we have uh, accumulated $5,831.27. Uh, if the ushers could please come forward. 
Anyone want to ush? <laughs> Thank you. Now we move into our celebration of abundance, our opportunity to give back from our financial abundance. Let's now read the unity of Jupiter prosperity blessing together. It's up on the screen. In a universe overflowing the abundance of good, we acknowledge God as the source of all our blessings. We affirm our receptivity and acceptance of this good from every direction, known and unknown, expected and unexpected. Our abundant good comes to us now. Thank you, God, and so it is. There are many ways to give. You can drop off your gift in the baskets that are going around or give digitally through our website and the Unity QR code or through PayPal on the PayPal QR code, both of which are available on the laminated signs posted throughout the church. And you can also text 561-581-1119. And lastly, you can fill out a credit card donation form and give by credit card in the bookstore. All these options can be set up for automatic recurring giving. To keep our time of giving sacred, I would like you to now take your gift in your hands and bless it. You are planting the seeds to your own prosperity and giving back to God from the abundance that has already been provided for you. Breathe life into your gift and thank God that you have this gift to give. And now affirm with me the offertory blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Alicia? Deep within every being alive there is a well with water from the source of all life. Filled to the brim with eternal love. God's love, Spirit's love, unconditional love is inside of every one. Drop your burdens, let go of your pain, let the love of spirit flow through your veins. Forgive yourself for on so long let it go let it go let it go let it go let love fill your soul and you can sing it let it go let it go let it go let it go let love fill your soul let it go let it go let it go let it go let love fill your soul let it go let it go let it go let it go let love fill your soul let it go let it go let it go let it go let love fill your soul let it go let it go let it go let it go let love fill your soul let it go let it go let it go let it go let love fill your soul let it go let it go let it go let it go let love fill your soul another part Drop it in the river, let it go. Burn it in the fire, let it go. Give it up to spirit, let it go. Give it up to spirit. Oh, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Let love fill your soul. Let it 
go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let love fill your soul. There's another part it goes. Free yourself as you let it go. You can sing the other part. Free yourself as you let it go easy. Free yourself as you let it go. Free yourself as you let it go. Let it go, let it go. Let it go, let love fill your soul. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Let love fill your soul. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Let love fill your soul. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Let love fill your soul. Keep singing. Let it go, 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 let it go. Give it up to spirit. Let it go, let it go. Let it go. Free yourself. Drop your burden. Let it go. Give it up to God. Let love fill your soul. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let love fill your soul.